Okay, so um, we're recording. Let me just check I'm recording here. Yes, good morning, everybody, and welcome back. Um, so uh, last week we were doing a uh, collage and we uh, were using coloured paint, uh, painted uh, pieces of paper alongside whatever else we had and um, as you saw during the lesson I started to add um, some acrylic paint um, to add some details and things into the picture um, so this time though what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of reverse that a little bit um, and that's uh, to prepare the surface before applying some paint uh, quite heavily uh, to make a painting with a textured uh, ground underneath um, so it's carrying on this theme of experimenting a bit but bringing in uh, bringing back a little bit of the uh, paint um, as well the painting techniques um, so we're going to have a look at that uh, first of all um, the picture that I'm going to be working on um, today is this one um, and I might mention this last week. Uh, the picture is really interesting because it's got a nice focal point, which I keep talking about at the top. We've got all these. Uh, we've got the highlight around the sort of cliff top and this um, chap at the top. Now, I thought he was a walker, but he's actually a photographer up there. But I've changed, uh, as you'll see in a minute, I've changed him into a, a walker with a walking stick. Ah, there's Prema. There we go. So um, I'm going to be working on this one. And the reason I've chosen this painting is because air, or this photo rather is because it's very atmospheric. So we've got all this misty sort of background. We've got strong uh, highlight on the chap at the top. Um, and then also uh, down here, we've got uh, these interesting rock formations, which again make interesting subject matter for texture and for collaged uh, backgrounds. So I'm going to be working on that one and I'll talk a bit more about what I've already done on that last night. Uh, and then uh, just to remind us of what I did with this one uh, last week. Let's make that nice and big. Um, so this was lots of paper um, that I made available on the website for you. Um, I I actually painted some paper with different colours and did blended um, areas. If you haven't seen me doing that, there is a video of me actually making the papers for you to work on. Um, and then I, so I started off with a larger shape, such as the mountain and the whole of the stone wall. And then I gradually whiffed it down to smaller shapes, such as on the rocks and the posts and so forth. Before then, towards the end of the lesson last week, I uh, I started to add um, little stipples and details with paint. So as I've already said, what we're going to do this week is we're going to um, actually just create a background um, texture um, before then painting back over the top. So I've got a a new painting up on my wall over here just to show you um, and this one is by an artist called Helen Harris and Helen Harris uh, does pretty much the sort of thing that we're doing uh, today so if we look really closely you can see there's lots of different papers so it's a little bit similar perhaps uh, in that she's probably made some of these papers first but then um, she's painted back over areas. So you've got um, a much smoother area, perhaps less collage at the top and these painted trees and so forth. And then as we move down, you can see all the wrinkly paper uh, and layers of paper that have been applied to create this texture, along with a bit of paint added in as well. So um, this sort of thing that um, I'm hoping we can explore a little bit today and probably next week as this um, takes a little while and I've introduced quite a lot of uh, new techniques for everybody to try out um, at the moment. So um, we're probably going to work on this one next week as well and I'll probably do another example of a picture to show you. Now this sort of lines in with uh, the way that I often work uh, and I've shown you this one before a few times as well. So on my painting called which I've just called Blue Coast it's quite an old painting 
uh, now but um, I used to do a lot of work like this previously so in the foreground so we're in the foreground here we've got lots and lots of texture that I built up on the surface with cardboard and um, various papers and some fabrics and things in there um, and when I say fabrics when I say fabrics I mean uh, things like sackcloth and things that are pulled apart a little bit to create this kind of stringy uh, effect or the effect that looks like grass and I've also on top of that also done splattering uh, lines um, little stipples of dots and things like that too so it's a whole lot of stuff going on in the foreground to draw the attention of the viewer and then as we go back it becomes a little bit smoother so on the C there I've got uh, less texture um, applied to the picture uh, there is some in there I'll just get in a bit closer <clears throat> so we can see bits of string coming through uh, bits of tissue that I've layered up um, but I've also then painted very heavily over the top if we go over to the back you can see little bits of collage maps coming through over the over the top of the paint but then these really lovely strong highlights painted over that too um, so the idea today is that as i said we create a nice textured background to actually work over the top of okay so um I today I am uh, going to try out using some uh, and I tried this out last night uh, I try I'm going to use some gouache uh, paint um, that I've recently got um, so there's a difference between gouache and acrylic so gouache is like a thick a thicker sort of watercolor paint it's more of an opaque opaque uh, watercolor paint and the nice thing about this is that when it's dry you can actually uh, reinvigorate it bring it back to life by just adding a bit of water so it's it's a really uh, nice medium to work with um, and uh, you know it's quite flexible from that point of view um, whereas acrylic which we uh, often use and you, if you haven't got a gouache then use acrylic today acrylic will dry quickly and once it's dry uh, usually you can't do too much with it so it's once it's dry it's set it's like a, a plasticky resin sort of um, paint um, which is quite nice for layering if you don't want the layer underneath disturbed in any way then you can put another layer on top of that and uh, build up those layers as you've seen uh, that we've done previously so there's a, a and, and the, oh, the finish between the gouache is more of a matte finish and uh, the acrylic is a little bit more of a shiny finish so there are differences between these paints and uh, you can also get paints uh, I think they're called acrylic paints and they're a mixture between gouache and acrylic which I've not tried out which um, perhaps I'll be trying out in a future lesson all right so we'll have a look over at the um, the desk so this is um, how far I've got so far with our picture so the picture that we're using or I'm using today is this one as I've explained earlier um, and I'm adding obviously it's in black and white but I'm going to add some color to the picture as you can see I've already started doing that um, now the way to start then is the same way that we've started previously um, so with the photo I've added uh, some carbon paper on the back uh, just to get the outlines really quickly so I can get on with the techniques and things um, so you can also put some graphite on the back as I've explained um, in every other lesson we've done put some graphite pencil on the back and then transfer your image by going around uh, the outlines so I've done that on here and you can just about see where I'll put a few basic sort of guidelines underneath now uh, what you do is you use some interesting papers, which is what I wrote on the email and a few of you have maybe thought well What is interesting papers? So it's anything you can find it can also be uh, Some of the papers uh, which we've made and that you've been printing off previously. So we've got all of the all of these we've got the uh, ink ones as well so you can gather those together um, and anything you can find really as you know I love using old maps um, I've also got some newsprint and one thing that I'm using a bit more of in this painting 
is uh, some tissue paper because it's thin which means when you tear it and crease it up you get the nice wrinkly sort of texture which um, is quite nice to paint over because it's not too bumpy um, and then you just literally you can glue it over other areas so this area just here you can see i've got this um, more bolder typeface and i'm just adding glue on top and it actually just softens down that typeface a little bit which you're going to do anyway with paint but um, it's quite nice to add something extra over the top of your collaged areas like that um, and you can do it with so this this little rock um, over here is made from some of the ink um, textures that we made and they're still on the website if you want to print them off so you can put that on there and you get just another layer of interesting texture to work on top of the other thing that i've used a bit last night and you can see it on these rock formations just here i'll just see if i get any closer so on the rock formations i have been working primarily uh, in this area anyway um, with some brown paper and what i've found uh, and this is a voyage of discovery almost is that I like working over the brown paper because some of the brown actually comes through the painted areas which is really uh, nice I found so you can see that I've painted some lines in here for the details on the rocks uh, and then some of the brown paper has come through um, and then I've also uh, as far as paint techniques go I've also been using uh, a toothbrush to get this nice splattery effect uh, on the painted areas as well and I found that that worked really nicely to create a little bit of atmosphere in the picture so for example I I did paint this chap on the top here uh, in a like um, a sort of a blacky blue color um, and then I wanted it to be more part of the landscape so what I did is I uh, just bring it in really close and you can see I've splattered him with my toothbrush and the gouache and then towards around the outside of it I've stippled it as well with some really harsh white so that he's sort of um, you know you kind of bringing in that detail a little bit more or making him contrast with the background a little bit more but also the splattering makes him part of the landscape and kind of makes it gel often what I see is people do a tree or they'll do um, a, maybe a person like this and um, it really stands out because they thought well it's a silhouette so I'm going to paint it like a silhouette and then it really sticks out so one way, subtle way to make it sort of blend in with the background and things is to do something like add a glaze of color or do um, and a glaze is like a thin layer or a wash of color over the top of it and then into the background a bit too so it then becomes a little bit more part of the landscape and as you can see over here in the fields and the landscape down here I've actually used contoured maps and things and then I've washed over the top with my gouache paint and blended it up into the sky a little bit there and then I actually put some more collage back on top of it so it is a case of like you can put one layer on you can put another layer on and then the rips and tears in the paper actually create something of a, a texture and a bit of interest when you put the paint on as well you see the tears of my paper along here as well and then as you zoom away from it it actually creates a nice sort of effect on the landscape so um, it is a case of you put your collage down your collage background down and then start working over the top now it will look kind of quite abstract to begin with quite messy even but the idea is that then with the paint you start to refine those um, edges and details using your paint brushes and using your opaque paint and making sure there's good contrast between light and dark um, it all sounds like quite a lot to think of but 
as you're working on it, these problems and things present themselves and then you start to tackle them. OK, so um, that's what we're going to do. I'm what I'm going to start with today is because I've done a little bit on the top there. I'm going to actually work on collaging the rest of the rock formations down here before then I paint over the top. So you'll be able to see me doing that um, before then. I'm going to put it on the heater for a few minutes before using the gouache on top. So this is the uh, previous uh, evening of work. So as you can see, I've already applied um, some different materials. So I've got brown paper, maps and collage papers on there. Uh, when I say collage papers, I mean the inks and things that um, the ink marks that we made previously in the lessons. You can see that just up near my right hand over there. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm literally applying quite heavily some of the opaque gouache over the top. And uh, the nice thing about the gouache is that um, it stays wet for a bit longer and you can apply water um, to make the gouache um, more malleable again. In other words, you can blend it even after it's dried which is fantastic um, in comparison to acrylic, obviously, which uh, once it's dry, you have to kind of restart again and get some more paint and work back over the top, which is another nice quality. Um, for this, we're just trying out the old gouache at the moment. So I'm just using some of the blue from the uh, Artex set that I've got here to layer over some paint and do a little bit of blending as I go. Uh, the nice thing about this set is it's got little um, open containers with the painting. So literally you can just dip your brush in and get the extra bit of colour you want. So it, it does allow for a little bit more of a free, free flow of um, working, which is really nice. So you can see the little bit of blending that's going on here now, which is really good. Uh, and I decided to get in there with the figure um, quite early on. Now, um, what I did earlier um, as well is I used the uh, carbon paper just to sort of uh, trace the outline of the figure so that I could get that straight in there, along with all the, the outlines of the painting. It just allows really for you to get going with the technique of collage and then working back over the top to create the texture. And one of my favorite things to do when painting is to use a little bit of uh, a spray kind of effect on the picture as well. Uh, and it creates this kind of uh, nice atmosphere in the painting particularly around this uh, cliff top that's got kind of a misty background in there as well. So you can see it's going a little bit faster now. Um, working just on the uh, rocks and things. I'm using more lines um, on the rocks uh, to describe the cracks and crevices and, and things on the rock that the man is standing on. And I'm just, quite, I work quite loosely with the paint actually, kind of just putting in um, marks and blending it quite loosely because what I know is that I'm going to work back over the top of these areas later. So just getting a bit of colour in there or a bit of the grey in the sky anyway is really important because um, it just allows a little bit of freedom to then add the layers of detail on the top. And the thing about painting and uh, drawing any of these things is as you're working you see new things that perhaps you didn't notice when you first looked at the picture. In fact you know doing a painting uh, from a photo or landscape being outdoors. Uh, it is like a forensic kind of operation and you're looking 
really carefully at things whereas normally in life you, you glance at things you might take in the atmosphere of a place but not really forensically looking at the detail uh, like we do in painting or drawing so as you can see I'm adding in lots of the details into the um, rock faces and I'm using contrasting tones of this grey and I wanted to get a bit of colour into the grey um, of the rocks as well so I've added little stipples of blue uh, what I'm doing here is I'm stippling dots or doing dots of white paint around the figure of the man to draw a little bit more attention to him by using that highlighted sun that you can see in the photograph up in there in the corner Uh, what I really enjoyed about this, uh, the rock face here particularly, is that you could see some of the brown paper uh, through some of my paintwork, which I liked because it brings the collage, the textures and the paint together in a kind of unity, which works, I think, quite well. And uh, up there in the corner, you can see a little bit of the um, inked patterns that I made um, a few uh, weeks ago. And here I go again, back in with the tooth toothbrush. Just because you've done a technique once, it doesn't mean you can't uh, work over the top of that technique and then come back and work in with it again. As I said, I really like the fine sort of spray that the toothbrush creates. So I'll just make sure the consistency of the paint is quite loose. And um, I test it normally on uh, another piece of paper. And I'm just trying to get this misted blended effect going across there as well. So one thing I was quite um, pleased about was how the field looked or the forest looked below the rocks. Um, the torn paper, um, which I've then applied in a horizontal fashion across that area, the torn paper um, picked up the paint as I applied it. Um, so the edges actually looked like rows or bits of trees and fields and so forth. It became quite suggestive in a way, which I was yeah, quite like that. Um, often when I've done paintings like this before, I apply the collage over the whole picture um, before I paint it all. Um, but in this case, in order to sort of be able to demonstrate to the class on Tuesday as well, I've left an area empty and I've just been doing a little bit at a time. Uh, and in a way, that just allows a little bit more room for um, coming up with new ideas for using the collage as we progress. And as you might have noticed, I put a little bit of map back on the green field to the left. Um, and that creates another sort of um, layer of depth and texture in the picture too. So here we go, back in with the rocks. Uh, and I really enjoy uh, building up the surface of the rocks um, because you can use lots of different marks. You can be quite loose about it. As long so there we go, building in quite rapidly into the rocks. And as I've said to you before, it is a case of adding layers and you can see me working back over some areas here too. And this is me just talking about some of the various techniques that I've used in this picture. Okay.
So as you can see, I'm collaging the um, whole area of this, uh, the remaining part of this landscape. I'm using lots of different things here. I'm using um, some of the collaged, uh, sorry, some of the painted um, pieces of paper from last session. Um, I'm also using um, maps and tissue paper back over the top of the picture as well. So you can see there's uh, tissue paper over maps and there's some old um, bags from um, from the shops that I've used as well. And what I'm doing now is I'm putting in the dark shadows on the um, on the rocks so I can define where all of those shapes go, just like I did on the previous session. Uh, the nice thing here is that we're building up lots of layers of colour and tone to create the texture. And I do use the toothbrush, which you'll see me using uh, in a little while as well. But basically, I'm, I'm doing the mid, the... Um, highlights, midtones, the highlights and the shadows to start building this up. And you can see I've added, applied very loosely an area of green, which I'm now applying some more yellows. And we're going for a darker tone down the bottom and lighter colours up towards the top, which you'll see me putting in in just a few seconds as well. light tones on the top of the grassy sort of area that I was talking about earlier. I do actually, towards the end of this video, add in some pinks as well. Um, but it's a case of layering those techniques on top of each other. Um, and then, as I explained during the lesson, it's honing in on some of the finer detail once you've got the overall tonal effect which is what I do as we progress through the rest of the picture. Um, next week, I'll be doing just a bit more work on this picture um, before trying something else out. But um, as you see, it was a, a really good um, exercise in using different textured papers to create a wonderful um, landscape.